ask for little bits of information. Okay, we don't need loads of information. If you want something, if you want a test drive code, we're going to need your email address because you want to speak to us via email. Great. And then next deal might be okay. Great. Let's get your test drive booked. We're going to need your driver license for that. You can do that here. Go. Oh, great. Brilliant. Okay. Give us your telephone number. We'll send you a text confirmation if you want one. So we've got all that information on a completely automated service without 17 click, 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 yeah. click. Conf- you know, you've got to fill this information in. And everyone sat around this table has gone to a website at some point and gone, oh, you know what? Oh, I'm not doing all this. I'm not, all I want, I've got a question. I've just got a question. That's Answer my question. Completely agree. I think that plays a, that, 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 that's how we see the role of a marketplace like Carwell, where you are often cross-shopping lots of brands you are booking, you are talking to people, and again, you don't want to fill out all your details. There's a reason why people are so lazy and use Amazon all the time. It's partly because they just can't bother to put their credit card details in multiple yeah. sites. Mm. And we've actually had a lot of people from um, Farfetch, which is an online luxury marketplace, and it's quite similar to car in the industry. You have the car manufacturers and you have the fashion brands, so think Gucci, Prada, etc. And then you have the boutiques, which is effectively the dealers. And there's a whole shift in that market of the, car, the brands wanting to go direct uh, and they're all huge users of the likes of Farfetch for this is ultimate luxury 2,000 pound sneaker type things um, because people are cross shopping and part of it is pure kind of laziness of not wanting to fill in forms and wanting to just cross shop everything and, and have one account Welcome to the latest edition of the AM News Show we're here today with the chief executive and co-founder of CarWow, James Hind, and HR Owens' chief technical officer, uh, Brett Ward. We'll be discussing a variety of subjects about the technology that allow uh, the industry to cater to luxury car buyers and hopefully provide a little bit of insight and advice to listeners along the way. Welcome, Brett. Thank you. Welcome again, James. Thank you. Uh, great to have you both in the studio. Um, Bit of a bit of a tech themed conversation, I suspect today. That's that's certainly the industry that James came into the sector from, and it's great to great to meet you uh, and and see how you operate at HRO. And we previously profiled the business and how it's transformed luxury car retail into sort of a a, a brand experience and a and a customer experience. Um, from a from sort of a membership point of view, really, and while I understand that you're not sort of front front facing on that, I, w- I wanted to know a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the technical side of the business that underpin uh, the 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 business and the, and the offering that you provide. Okay, um, well, firstly, thanks for having us. That's really yeah, appreciate you coming up. Um, not being customer facing, um, I suppose we kind of are because everything that you see that represents HRO in from a customer standpoint. It does come from us and from from our departments, and we have a, a an amazing team, probably the best I've ever worked with, um, that, that supplies and funnels all that. And I suppose my job is to to stitch all that together. Um, I think that's kind of what I do. And it's it's a hard thing to do in the industry these days because we're quite, I suppose, far behind the retail sector and the tech sector, and we're playing catch up to a point. But we use technology to stitch and thread data together to give us what we refer to as insight as opposed to what other people have is which is reporting so i don't know what else do you, is there any specific parts of business you want me to talk <laughs> about the sales force the api infrastructure that we've got the hatfield bill going on which is which is going to be amazing so we've got loads of stuff well absolutely of, i mean we, we've we've had an early briefing on on hatfield and hopefully we're going to get in <laughs> there we're hopefully going to get in there quite early in the process of completion so that we can take a good look around so yeah i mean uh, what, what's that what's that meant for you, for you then in in, in your department um a lot i suppose so with regards to specking the build out how the the retailers are going to look from a from a technological standpoint um how the staffing is going to work how the ampr is going to work um from the point if you if you come on site and we know you service will be alerted that you're going through service and you'll be welcomed by name if you're a customer we can pass you through the database and you'll be welcomed by name likewise if you're a customer and we, we don't tag in the crm that you've been in we can question that as well we know you've been on site because the car was here so mrs smith turned up in her you know 458 and nobody spoke to her so we've got a problem so we can use it for lots of different ways the technology is not just for selling more cars because that's not really what we do the technology is to make 
the whole experience of everything we do better and better and better and better. And that's Hatfield will be the first sort of example of that that, that we've been able to do from the start. We've had to sort of refix everything in the existing businesses, but this is a ground up build of best part of fifty million pounds, I think, to to have all those retailers in one place. Um, but the, the opening will we'll be opening one building in December, and I think the other one will follow in January, and then we'll have a grand opening, which we'll obviously invite you guys down to. So Great stuff. Look should, forward should be to it. Interesting. So, I mean, it's it's the, there's a customer customer service aspect to it there's also a, an efficiency aspect to that kind of technology i guess as, you, as you're looking at into the after sales and and that side of the business in particular you you, you can move people through and around the business quickly yeah and, and, oh gotcha um so the, again ampr it's we're not just using it for for car parks and entrance and, and knowing customers it, you you will come in you'll be directed in and if you are going to sales we want to get to the point where if it, we know you're an electric charger we'll tell you which charging points free and there'll be a free service to charge your car up if it sales it'll be really simple to go and park and if you want to park you you can and use the electric chargers um, service wise you'll be directed to which lane you go down it takes you into the building we do your tire pressures we do your tire treads uh, tracking i think is done and you you're welcomed you basically get out of the car you're welcomed you're taken through into the atrium where you'll be served coffee or whatever you normally have and then your car will be done, serviced in one of the 50 bays that we've got there. Um, it will be cleaned, valeted, re-photographed. Your photos will be pushed back into your um, Salesforce My Garage position, so you'll have a whole new photo set, spins, exploded spins, and to the point we we may be considering something we're working with Salesforce on is the minting of uh, an NFT, for example. So we'll, as well as the photo booth, we'll have a scanner sat in there so we can spin, mint, and the customers can walk away, or if should they want to, with an NFT of the, their own vehicle. So wow. there's, there's lots of really cool stuff we're trying to do and look at. So we're building for that now. So that I get to play with all that cool stuff, which, which is great. And Ken's really on board with it. And it is, it's, it's given experience to the customers that they can't get anywhere else. And Hatfield is, you know, I think the only place in the world where we've got Lamborghini and Ferrari in the same location. You literally can't do it. So it's uh, it'll be quite a, quite a venue to go to. That's impressive, and it, just bringing you in as well, James. Um, it's interesting to hear all your views from from both of you on what are how are customer expectations changing. I mean, we, we've talked for some time about people being time poor, um, wanting to to have kind of instant fulfilment, um, and I guess Brett dealing with customers with in the luxury sphere. Um, Time is absolutely money for them, but they're also after unique experiences. So how digitally, I guess, from Carwell's perspective and physically, how does that all kind of marry up? So I'll, I'll, I'll jump in first. We're, so we're using tech to try and speed things up. We want to send people the right images of the right marketing at the right time when we know they're going to respond. We want to make payment for service easier. So we're working with the guys over at Vi uh, Payvine, um, which we want to integrate. Um, so literally, if we send a, a service bill out to someone, it's three clicks, bank transfer, and it's done. And it is about time. The, the the website we relaunched is literally three clicks to book a test drive, three clicks to make an appointment, three clicks to talk about finance. And before, I think it was 17 type, click, or tab. And it's like, oh, my God, even I got bored. It's like, it's, we can't do that. So it's all about efficiencies and saving time. But if you build the tech in the right place, the payload that we have in the data layer that comes across with that form gives us all the information we need. We don't need the customers to type everything in. We just need, okay, what do you want? We've got your email address, brilliant, because you want an email back. We'll sort this out for you. So it's just, it's using little efficiencies and using modern technology to create those efficiencies for, for a better customer journey. So, which is, again, saying what, what you guys do. It's, a, it's, it's the efficiency and the ease of, of the, the car buying process, but from you is the, the retail yeah, exactly. side. Yeah. And we, we find on luxury, on the new car side, and and now now that we deal with the, the used, it's a lot of it is just about I want the car quickly. It's not about price. They don't care. What the, broadly speaking, they don't care what the price is. It's th these are impulse purchases. These are not your main car. These are not your. Th th these are enthusiasts largely. They want the car as quickly as possible, and they'll look around to see where they can get that. They're happy to have it delivered more than the the volume. Uh, players uh, or, or someone buying a volume manufacturer and there is an element of that experience so I think HR own is probably the most famous name within the luxury car market and very prestigious locations obviously and people 
gravitate towards those rather than having it come from somewhere not as glamorous sounding as a city. Uh, they like that kind of badge of honor. And then we see on, to your point of convenience, on the sell your car piece, we have, we focus, we have a heavier bias towards luxury there. I think largely because probably of our YouTube channel, we do a huge amount of content yeah. with all the Ferraris, Lamborghinis, except anything. And the enthusiasts and, and owners are watching it. And we sell them, by the way, you can sell your car and you don't have to leave your house. And that's a very convenient point for them. They, they take photos of the car and the dealer will collect from their house. Brilliant. These people are, as you said, time poor. I guess that, that was a big consideration for you, Brett. I mean, we talked before about our earlier interview with Ken Chu and he defined luxury experience as that lifestyle piece and the connection to the retailer and the brand and the, the, you know, the experience yep. of owning a vehicle. I guess you guys had to sit down quite early and determine exactly what luxury meant from a technology point of view. Yeah, it's not, I suppose what we don't want to do is, is put it right at the forefront of, of, of everything so it's obvious what we're doing. We, it needs to be a very, very slick, very intuitive um, set of services and, and, and connections that just make it easy. We don't want people to, you know, have to log into 15 different systems and and that, that includes our staff as, as, as well as the customers and different apps and different solutions. It's it, That's not what people want. People want to connect with us in a way that they connect with everybody else. And, you know, a, a lot of the cars that we sell is done through WhatsApp. A lot, a lot of the communications we do are, are, are done through WhatsApp calling or video calling. And we have to account for that. And that's where, and because we've got, you know, some Salesforce at, at the center of where we are, we can plumb lots and lots of native solutions into that so we can keep all those records and make sure that data is secure and our customers just have a, uh, I suppose, a, a varied experience because of how they're choosing to communicate, but we're capturing everything in, in one single place, in one single record with multiple vehicles and, 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 and multiple outlets and how we push back to them. So it's it's using tech in a way that, suits everybody and that everybody benefits with and we've got a lot of work on um, that we're doing with manufacturers that I won't name where we're helping them with with their API sets and their structures and how they then integrate with with, with Salesforce and so on which we, which is great for us because the more adoption of a large singular system within a within the automotive brand they'll be more built for it and as long as and everything that we do and everything we build, it's all reusable. So it'll be done. We'll put it. We'll leave it so they can go and use it on marketplace and literally just start connecting up because it's just it's better for customers. Is it is it is it the case? Do you th- do you feel like the car retailer needs to take the lead at this stage? Do they need to ensure that they've got that oversight and a little bit of the control of that of of customer above and beyond the brands themselves? Um. It, no, <laughs> the, the, the word control and, and, and you know it's like having a submit button on your form. It's just wrong, isn't it? It's like here's an action that I want to want to do. The data belongs to the customers, uh, and if you have a good enough relationship with that customer, they're happy for you to use that data to communicate with them. So that's the same with the manufacturer, and what what the manufacturers have done for for years and years and years, and, the, and this is changing now. And Ferrari is a great example of that. That we have a full live API data exchange with them. So if something happens there, we see it. If we do something, they see it. And that's what will will come. That's what we'll all see eventually is that full connection. And that's, I suppose, in part leads to the manufacturers going, okay, it's going to be an agency model. And that has a place, but it, it'll take time and used cars are an issue and so on. But the exchange of data between manufacturers, retailers, and the ownership of the data by the customers, it needs to be, it needs to be fair. It needs to be secure. It needs to be accessible. It needs to be editable, and you need, I suppose, people at the the retail manufacturer side working together to make the most of that data to make the customer experience as good as it can possibly be, by not bombarding, by reacting, by suggesting, by nudging, and by offering the things that the customer wants to see, as opposed to sending them absolutely everything about absolutely everything, yeah. and it just becomes noise. So it's just it's tailoring and treating. I've explained this a few times in different ways and what I've got to is you need to treat everybody exactly the same and completely differently at the same time, which is a, is a quantum state of doing something and I get that. But the retailers and manufacturers want the customers to follow a process that gets them down to engage, to purchase, to use, 
to repurchase, to re-engage in the service and so on in the events and everything goes in there. But the customers will do it in whatever they want to do. So we have to let them do that while they're following a process. And if you can monitor and track how those journeys work, if you know someone's stuck at stage here, it's a nudge. So the automation of the nudge is what Salesforce allows us to do, but in a really slick, smooth, kind, organic way without somebody manually doing it. And that arrives with the customer how? How, how, do, how does the customer get a nudge? <laughs> um, so it, if it could be through retargeting, it could be through a, uh, an email campaign, it could be through an event invite, it could be through a, uh, a, a, one of the tours that we do. So there's, there's, there's lots of different ways that we can, that we can do that. So we, we have pan- campaigns, automated campaigns, and each customer is on those journeys depending on their actions, interactions, lack of interactions, lack of actions, lack of response. Would they click on email, whether they opened the email, what they clicked. All that is done, stored, and it works out for the best of how we should then reapproach that. And it's learning all the time what's best and what works. If you've got 100 journeys of people went from A to D and these are the steps, you know that they're the steps. If you times that by 10 and then times it by 10, so it grows and grows and grows and gets smarter and smarter. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a commonality when it comes to tech, it seems. Simplicity, is, is that what you're always driving for, James, at Carwell? Uh, ultimately for the consumer. Mm. But as you said, it's every consumer is different. But I mean, we've got 12 million odd uh, consumers, email addresses, and they're all in different states of buying. And we'll look for any signals we can about where they're at or profile their current car and we'll know if it had finance or the age, etc. Uh, and just trying to be helpful without expecting them to necessarily act or engage now because they're not in the, in the process, but they can suddenly be in it. And I think that's the advantage that Carwell has versus, frankly, a car manufacturer or dealer. Because Carwell is behind a login, you have to log into Carwell or register with it. So we can see your email address and see what you're doing. We know what your car you've got. So we could see that you're currently driving a Maserati, for example. And you're watching videos about whatever, the new Aston Martin or a new Ferrari. And the, the dealer won't know that. The car manufacturer won't know that. But because they're logged in, we know that. So that's an audience pool that we can then create of this person owns this. They're looking at this. In this example, hypothetically, Maserati, do you want to do anything? Or dealer who, you so, who sold the Maserati in the first place, do you want to do anything to this audience pool? And that's what we do on, on a very big scale. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I was no. just going to say, because talk, talking to manufacturer marketing directors in the past, that's the holy grail for them is being able to identify that a customer doing a particular action is is then, I guess, a, an opportunity for them to get in early and with targeted, perfectly timed yeah, but, but what information have they got for, yeah, for, for that? They, they don't, you, you're browsing the website, let's say, make it up. The manufacturer website, you're browsing it two years after you bought the car. The cookie's obviously completely dead or expired if it ever existed. Mm. So how the hell do you know who that customer is or what they're doing? And as an anecdote of one, I've owned lots of different cars over the years. I still get emails from the different car manufacturers yeah. that I own saying, do you want to service this or this? I don't own the bloody car. I haven't <laughs> owned it for three years. And they haven't updated. that. that they don't know that. Yeah. And, and all this talk about, I love what you're saying about owning the customer. Yeah, some car manufacturers, not, not anymore really, some dealers who say, oh, I want to own the customer. No one owns the customer. With one click of an unsubscribe button, the customer is removed themselves from you. Yeah. Mm. So how can you own anything? Yeah. Mm. What, what you said about cookies and, and very interesting and what you said just like, they can watch the website. It will know they can't. ITP put pay to that. So you, you yeah, now exactly. can't do yeah. that. And, yeah. and So that's the big change. So you've got Apple and Facebook fighting it out and Google are in there because they want to control the market. Kind of get why they're doing it, but it's a bit of a pain. Um, so the account area is the only way to do it. And when the, the time I spent at iVendi was all about how that account area works and then separating it off. And and without an account area and without server side, your marketing departments are going <laughs> to be literally shooting in the dark very shortly, uh, which is quite interesting. Um, so we've done that. And we, and we haven't changed the way we were going since I've joined HRO in. Um, we, we'll, we, we have in already in beta now experience cloud with Salesforce, which is where the customer area will be. So that's where your cars will sit. It's where your car imagery will sit. It's where your car service history will sit. It's where your partners, friends, kids, cars will sit. Um, all the information that you want to store in there, you can, all in one place about all your cars. And the, the, the Dot Life project, is, which is what it's called, is going to be the place where we can still really target 
the right people with the right things at the right time, as opposed to the, 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 the crushing of marketing by ITP and what's happening. And you're right, with, without an account area, if you're not looking into that now and that approach, which is my, you've got what, 85% of the manufacturers now looking at Salesforce, but they want the data to come in, you're going to miss out. You, you, literally, businesses will start to fail because they can't see what's going on anymore. Is, is there anyone, well, I imagine you come across all sorts of customers <laughs> with HRO in. <laughs> They're all fantastic. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Is, is there any pushback to, you know, the, 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 you know, the customer base becoming a membership base? No, it's not, you know, it's not, we don't have any, I suppose, questions or concerns with customers if they don't want their data to be stored with us. They literally tick a box. And, and that's all we do. And the same with Marks and Spencers and Amazon, whoever else you want to go to. If that account area is there, it's like if I want to delete my account, I'll delete my account. So what we need to do is make that really, really easy. Mm. But all the stuff that we're doing is not, we don't bombard, we don't you know, splatter on people with garbage and pointless emails because you think you might get a lead out of it. People, you know what I mean, they can self-serve now. They don't, they don't need marketing. It's more about, for us, it's the events and, and awareness and then the reactive targeting to what those people are already doing on that journey. And if they're going to do it themselves anyway, we'll kind of leave them to it. If they're following the process, like, okay, yeah, you don't need anything from us. But if there's a stall or anything, it's a gentle nudge. And if they don't react, we might send them this. But if they do react, we'll probably send them this. Hmm. How apparent do you have to make it from the outset, you know, the, the breadth of the service that they will benefit from if, you know, if they share their data and become how important a, is it? a login oh god member. yeah absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, i mean that, that's still a marketing piece to a degree isn't should it? we want to talk to anyone it is absolutely crucial that the the, the preference center which we've done a huge amount of work work on uh, over the past few years is absolutely a hundred percent we we don't there's no breach of gdpr um it's i think that's an atrocious thing to do and i, I find it offensive when people do it to me um i don't want data that i don't want i don't want information that i don't want but if I'm trapped and my data is trapped with respect by a business that I want to transact with, then that's okay. And you've got to have that mindset with your, you know, with our customer base, especially with ours. Um, we have, a, as you can imagine, a few high net worths on there. Um, and you know, we, we have we have a very small, very very small unsubscribe rate. This, the smallest I think I've ever worked with. Um, and it's yeah, it, we we do all right. We're not concerned. We don't have big drop offs. And and the, but the essential piece in that is that they know they're benefiting, I guess, from be, from having that data yeah, transparency. So uh, I suppose I'm a CRO guy at heart, and, and the first rule of conversion rate optimization is literally, if you want something, you've got to give them something back. So if you want something from me and want to book a test drive, I'm going to need some information. But what I don't need is all of it all at once. So we have a... I don't know what I can say on here, but we have the, the, the slutty dating concept, right? <laughs> I've got a whole deck on this if you want to see it, which a friend of mine wrote. He's super. <laughs> so it takes some explaining. By okay, okay, I get that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you're, so you're at the first dates and you've had your meal and it's all great, and it's like, do you want to see each other again? That's okay. But what we don't do is go, okay, can I have your first name and surname? Yeah, uh, and your title. Yeah, and can I have your address? I mean, if you were the other date, you'd be going, you yeah, know, really. really? <laughs> You know what I mean? If you're if you're asking for that at the end of the first date, it's a bit odd. You shouldn't be doing it. Ask for little bits of information. Okay? We don't need loads of information. If you want something, if you want a test drive code, we're going to need your email address because you want to speak to us via email. Great. And then next year might be, okay, great. Let's get your test drive booked. We're going to need your driving license for that. You can do that here. Go, oh, great, brilliant. Okay, give us your telephone number. We'll send you a text confirmation if you want one. So we've got all that information on a completely automated service without 17 click, 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 yeah. click, conf you know, you've got to fill this information in. And everyone sat around this table has gone to a website at some point and gone, oh, you know what? Oh, I'm not doing all this. I'm not, all I want, I've got a question. I've just got a question. That, Answer my question. Completely agree. I think that plays, a, that, 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 that's how we see the role of a marketplace like Carwell, where you are often cross-shopping lots of brands. You are booking, you are talking to people, and again, you don't want to fill out all your details. There's a reason why people are so lazy and use Amazon all the time. It's partly because they just can't bother to put their credit card details in yeah. multiple sites. Mm. And we've actually had a lot of people from um, Farfetch, which is an online luxury marketplace, and it's quite similar to car in the industry. You have the car manufacturers, and you have the fashion brands, so I think Gucci, Prada, etc. And then you have the boutiques, which is effectively the dealers. And there's a whole shift in that 
market of the cut the brands wanting to go direct. Uh, and they're all huge users of the likes of Farfetch for this is ultimate luxury, two thousand pound sneaker type things. Um, because people are cross shopping and part of it is pure kind of laziness of not wanting to fill in forms and wanting to just cross shop everything and, and have one account. Yeah. And we see the same. It'd be great for great for HR Owen for those customers who fancy a Lamborghini and but then they might dabble with Ferrari. Well, they've got the breadth of choice. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Well, we that, have a, that's the question I was going to ask. Is that actually does this play into the or kind of become an advantage for multi-brand dealer groups and providers such as marketing providers such as Carwell in that you have that breadth? Whereas if somebody is, if a manufacturer is kind of effectively kind of creating an account area or whatever, then the, the point that that customer goes off to another brand, the manufacturer has lost them, whereas they can cross-shop with with businesses such as yours. Yeah, so obviously we, we, we monitor quite heavily uh, the brands that we have, but also the brands that we don't have. Um, it, it's quite important to see what's, what's coming in. So if we've got... I don't know, a load of uh, Porsches or, or, or Audis coming in in part exchange, then we know that there's a market for that for particular models that we sell. So it, it's massive important to monitor all the information that's coming through. And it's like, okay, well, if that's the thing, do we then start retailing these cars out because we have specialist car services? Have we got a marketplace for that? Well, yes, we have because we have, again, a huge amount of information come back up the website, what people bring in, what people are searching for. So we can sort of use that information of, of, of conquest stuff to match up as well. Um, with regards to cross-selling, Again, we only cross-sell um, if people want that information. So we don't bombard. But if yeah. you want to know more about Lamborghinis and you own a Rolls-Royce, that's okay. We'll talk to you about Lamborghinis, but not sign you up to every single marketing campaign. What we might do is go, okay, well, you were looking at um, Aventador's or wherever it's going to be, and go, okay, we've got a launch coming up. You've been on the website three or four times. You're quite engaged with Rolls-Royce. Brilliant, super that. We'll speak to Rolls-Royce, you know. We're going to invite these guys over to the next launch. And, and we do, and some come, some don't. We don't normally weirdly struggle to fill our events, um, especially test drive events, funnily enough. Um, but it's it's filling it with the right people and that right sort of, you know, gauging it so, it's a, so, it, so it works. Yeah. But we wouldn't would we invite you to everything. Well, no, because you've got lives. You know, we, we run that many events and tours and trips. It's You, you, you literally... You'd have to do it as a full-time job to attend everything that you've done. And we have really amazing marketing uh, managers within each brand that specifically, you know, work on these these huge events and tours and trips. And they look after and the, and, the, and that experience when you go on them is just, you know, it's not. Have manufacturers done it better? Probably not. Maybe Bentley. Some of the stuff that they've done have, have been you know, like the ice driving they do mm. is just an astounding, but it's that sort of level that we need to get to. It's, it's manufacturer level events that we, we try and run. But it's it's horses for courses, isn't it? I think I get, uh, did you quite uh, quite a disservice saying you're not customer facing there, uh, Brett? I, th <laughs> I think I see more customers than literally anyone else in the business. It, it, not face to face. Not yeah, on a uh, perhaps on a spreadsheet, but you've got that. You've probably got deeper understanding than most people in the business. Yeah, so we have um, so something we built over the past well, the second time we built it. To be fair, we built it somewhere else first. Um, is, a, is our BI product, which we've built within well, initially Tableau and now within Power BI, uh, and that's pivoted now in the business. So we have live data pushed in from many sources. So from our uh, CDK, our DMS provider, or Keyloop as they are now, um, to the website, to telephony, uh, marketing. So all these bits we've got streaming in at the moment. So we're now at the stage where, okay, sales have got what they wanted, so we're building stock, so we can do stock term reports, what people are looking at, what we should be buying, so we've got buyer's reports coming through. So there's a huge amount that the business will end up relying on with with regards to BI. But we're not, what we, what we won't do, which is what a lot of people are doing, is that manual, okay, well, we'll have this spreadsheet and we'll ingest that and we'll type that in and, you know, you've got 100 monkeys on typewriters literally typing in data. Everything with BI is automated. We don't literally do anything. And that's the plan. So it's we're now at the stage now where we've put version into the business. and We've got our master version, and then we're just growing and growing and growing. So if marketing want mapping data on specific vehicles for specific target customers, we'll go, okay, well, these are the areas that you should be targeting with your paid search because this is where people will buy those cars. So... We can automate that, so that's the next step. And you talked about the holy grail, the attachment of, of, of stock 
um, which currently isn't done. Uh, so stock records, stock objects, customer records, customer objects. If we can tag the uh, object within Salesforce as a vehicle, which we can now do and push the Salesforce unique IDs out with stock feeds, then we know every time, everywhere, what's been clicked on within. So we can then look at a single car and say, okay, how many customers are looking at this right now? How many engaged customers have we got? How many leads have we got on it? And the other way around. So it's, it gives us a lot more control on what we should be doing, what we should be buying, what we shouldn't be buying, what we should be selling, how much we should be selling it at, down to the level of, I don't know, the colour of the stitching, should we want to go to that sort of finite point. So that's my, I suppose, my biggest project as opposed to Hatfield and numerous other things that are going on is, is the BI piece because that's the insight and the information that everybody wants. And we've managed to stitch that in through Active Directory. So if you're a Ferrari sales manager, you'll get your report for your retailer. But if you're the brand director, you'll get your report for all the retailers. And if you're Ken, you get the report for everything. And and that, and that for Ken is great because he can walk into any retail and go, who's the best salesperson here on his phone? And he can look by profit, by um, sales units, by order take, by order bank, literally on the phone before he walks into the business or while he's sat there with them. So it's, it's that sort of information that businesses need, um, but it's the stitching together of data that, that enables that, that takes the time. So we've, you know, we're probably two and a half years into the BI project and they're now seeing that sort of tip of the iceberg and they're going, oh, this is great. So that's, yeah, that's kind of my life. So I, I see customers literally every day, thousands of them, but in a, you know, I've not quite got to the matrix stage yet, but it's literally <laughs> through BI and those sort of report examples that we're, we're going through. Fantastic. Yeah, looking lost at me now, aren't you? It's no, no. I don't know where you go from there, from the matrix to, <laughs> to, 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 to where. I don't know. But, I mean, I guess the insight that Ken and, and the rest of the leadership team are getting is is truly informative. You know, you're, from the raw data, is it, is it that accessible? It's on an app and, and they can... Yeah, f- phone, desktop, tablet. Yeah, literally anywhere in the world, 24-7. Yeah. And Absolutely. that's, we'll build out more and more and more. We'll plumb accounts in so you then, you know, we can stitch marketing in accounts and you can say, okay, how many more Bentegas do we need to sell? Okay, well, we've got 20 to do to hit target for the manufacturer. What marketing campaigns work best? These ones. So we can then automate. Okay, we'll reduce marketing spend, push marketing spend, hit targets. Absolutely. That's that. And then I can leave. I mean, that's the, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just replace myself with a <laughs> dial on the desk that says more or less for each brand and then... I'll go and do um, something else, I'm sure. Uh, but it's, yeah, but Ken gets all that. He wants that insight. He wants to know what's going on in the business. And he can't, you know, he's, he's literally the busiest guy. I'm not even sure he sleeps anymore. So he's not obviously just C, uh, CEO of, of HRO and he's got Cardiff City to, to, to work with, which takes up a lot of time, obviously, during the season and, and with transfers. But there's numerous other things that the guy does as well. And he's literally like a machine. I've never worked with anyone that's worked or that works that hard. But he's also still really engaged with the business and knows what's going on and wants to know more and more and more and more. So, but he's yeah, great. He's a great boss actually. Good guy. You'll be feeding into this then, James. That the HRO in machine, car, you know, Carwow will have customers that that go straight into HRO in, won't they? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the kind of reporting we provide that for all the Carwow leads and HRO, we know ahead of the pack on this stuff. The big bit we're working on now is integrating our systems, because we show all these reports, but it's only for Carwell leads ultimately, integrating into their system, particularly on Salesforce or, or some of the bigger groups creating their own systems. But we want that visibility across everything. It just leads to a better customer experience. Everyone wins, so 100%. Absolutely. I feel like we've come full circle there a little bit, but that, that's that's definitely the, the overriding sense. You know, all this data, all this insight feeds into... More efficient business, better customer exactly. experience. And, yeah, and that's all we need. You know, we're not, uh, the word dealers, unfortunately, it's part of our logo, which I'd love to remove, but I don't think we can. We're retailers and we need to accept that. And we yeah. need to treat people and give them that retail experience. And if you don't give people the experience they want, they'll go somewhere else and get an experience, which might be better, and then they're gone. So it's like, why would you not do everything really, really well? So we need to facilitate it how we do that for our for our sales teams and for our service teams and, and for, you know, even down to the, the, the validators and, and, and everyone that's in our business that contributes to that experience the best possible and easiest and simplest way of, of, of doing that. Because the more systems we throw in, we complicate, and that's that's the wrong thing to do. 
I don't want emails from Carlyle. That's the worst thing in the world. It's something else to do because it has to go from here to here and then they've got to type it in. It's like, why? They've got an API set, a nice simple one. We can take their API set, plummet straight to Salesforce. And then we can send that lead as, as an action if they're an existing customer. Say, okay, Dave wants to speak to somebody about this particular car. And we can send it to the person who's in the business who's free that may have dealt with Dave before. And why would you want an email if you can yeah. do something like that instead? So we're in the process. We, we auto trade. I think done. Hey, Carl would be next. So we're building all these API sets in with all our suppliers, portals, and, and everyone else because we don't want more white noise in people's inboxes that can get lost. We don't want double keying. Why would you? Yeah. No, no. no they're just a customer. They don't. They don't. Do they. Yeah, it's, it's it's the worst. And the biggest one for us, I suppose, was after sales. Um, we spent a lot of time working with, with the Key Loop people and getting the API sets working with them and what used to take, I don't know, up to seven to ten days to transfer the information correctly from one system, so from an after-sales and accounts service from our DMS into our CRM is now two seconds. And we can create a customer record or a vehicle record now in either system and it's searchable in the other one in two seconds. And that, that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm super proud of that. I tell, you know, the senior <laughs> team, I think, let's look at me gone out. But it's, uh, it's, it's a big achievement. That efficiency of reporting and insight is, is so important now. All in the detail. Mm, yeah. Listen, guys, I think we'll, we'll probably wrap up there. But a, a great insight into the technology behind HRO and, and the similarities between uh, the two businesses are, are, are quite striking, actually. So hopefully... We'll see them married together to, to some success in future. Brett, James, thanks ever so much. Thanks Thank for joining me. us. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it.